Hello everyone. So in this session, let's discuss bacteriology. The bacteriology is nothing but the study of bacteria and the bacteria, they're mainly classified based on the gram stain and the shape of the bacteria. So based on this, so bacteria, they're mainly classified into four groups. The first is either that is GPC gram positive cocci or GPB gram positive bacilli or GNC gram negative cocci or GNB gram negative bacilli. So we have four important gram positive cocci, staphylococcus, streptococcus, pneumococcus and enterococcus and we have two important gram negative cocci that is meningococcus and gonococcus. So with that we are done with the cocci. If we are talking about bacilli, so we have seven important gram positive bacilli. Bacillus, Clostridium, Corinebacterium, Mycobacterium, Acteromyces, Nocardia and Listeria. So these are the seven important gram positive bacilli. So remaining all are gram negative bacilli and there are many gram negative bacilli which we have classified them into enterobacterial, important oxidase positive bacteria. The cocoa bacilli, the spirochids, the non-cultivable bacteria and the atypical pneumonia causing bacteria. So with this introduction to bacteriology, so let's start with gram-positive cocci. So the first important gram-positive cocci is Staphylococcus. If you talk about Staphylococcus, so Staphylococcus has three important virulence factors. The first one is the cell surface factor and the second one is the enzymes and the third one is the toxins. We have one important cell surface factor that is protein A and protein A is antiphagocytic. It prevents the bacteria from phagocytosis. And we have four important enzymes, coagulase, DMNase, hyaluronidase and staphylokinase. The coagulase is responsible for the, it is having antithrombin-like activity, therefore it is responsible for the production of fibrin. And fibrin is nothing but clot. This clot will limit the spread of infection. That's why staphylococcus can cause localized infection that is abscess. And whereas GMNase, hyaluronidase and staphylokinase, they are responsible for spreading infection that is cellulitis. So with that, moving on to the toxins. So we have four important toxins in case of staphylococcus, hemolysin, which is responsible for the hemolysis, breakdown of RBC. And we see complete hemolysis by staphylococcus, that is beta hemolysis. Toxic shock syndrome, toxin type 1, which is a super antigen, which causes a disease, toxic shock syndrome. And enterotoxin, Entero means intestine, it affects the intestine, therefore it causes gastroenteritis. And we need to know one thing, right? The toxin is preformed. So what if the toxin is preformed? It is preformed, the incubation is short, and it is approximately one to six hours or less than six hours. And this toxin is heat stable. Next important point, what we need to know, sir, what is the source of this toxin that is enterotoxin? The source of the enterotoxin of produced by the staphylococcus or yes, the milk and milk products. Right? So milk and milk products are the source and it is a preformed toxin because of the, the incubation is very short, one to six hours and it is a heat stable toxin. So these are the points which we need to know regarding staphylococcal enterotoxin, which is a very important area here. So with that one more, the fourth toxin produced by staphylococcus aureus is exfoliative toxin, which is responsible for the disease 4S, that is staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome. So this is about the important virulence factors of staphylococcus. <clears throat> All of them are in front of you. Cell surface factor, the enzymes and toxins. One cell surface factor, four important enzymes and four important toxins with their function, right? And like I said, protein A is antiphagocytic, prevent the bacteria from phagocytosis. Coagulase is responsible for the localized skin infection like abscess. DNA, hyaluronidase, staphylococcus is responsible for spreading Skin infection, cellulitis, hemolysis is responsible. Hemolysis is responsible for hemolysis, toxic shock syndrome, toxin type 1 for toxic shock syndrome, enterotoxin for gastroenteritis, and exfoliative toxin for staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome. So once we know the virulence factors, once, once we know what do they cause, then just summarize the clinical manifestations of staphylococcus aureus. So the clinical manifestations of staphylococcus aureus are mainly it can involve the skin and subcutaneous tissue where it can cause localized infection like abscess and spreading infection like cellulitis and it can also cause impedigo the the, right, the rashes the nodular rashes over the face palm and so, ha, ha, uh, palm and sole impedigo then it can cause botryomycosis there also you see skin rashes on the buttocks area and the uh, thigh and all so botryomycosis so if you see the word botryomycosis, you should not get confused by seeing the word mycosis. Mycosis means fungal infection, but here it is a misnomer. Botryomycosis is not a fungal infection. It is a bacterial infection caused by the bacteria Staphylococcus aureus. 
that along with the skin and soft tissue it can also involve cardiovascular system and respiratory system where it causes infective endocarditis and staphylococcus aureus is the most common cause of native valve infective endocarditis once again i'm telling you it is not the only bacteria which causes native valve infective endocarditis there are many bacteria but it is the most common bacteria causing native valve infective endocarditis and staphylococcus aureus is a bacteria which is responsible for pneumonia hospital acquired pneumonia that is nosocomial pneumonia along with that it can also cause osteomyelitis and once again i'm telling you such staphylococcus aureus is the most common organism causing osteomyelitis right very important so these are the important clinical presentation of staphylococcus aureus involving the various systems then if you move on to diagnosis then on microscopy right if you do gram stain what we see we know that it is a gram positive cocci but arrangement is important what is the arrangements are staphylococcus aureus is arranged in clusters once you see cluster arrangement you can say oh this might be staphylococcus then when you see blood agar we have already explained because of hemolysin toxin it can cause hemolysis and it causes complete hemolysis that is beta hemolysis and if you see on the nutrient agar So on nutrient agar staphylococcus aureus produces golden yellow pigment very very important point which gives a oil paint appearance to the staphylococcus aureus so golden yellow pigment with oil paint appearance on nutrient agar is the characteristic of again staphylococcus aureus any special test to confirm it is staphylococcus aureus the kettle is positive it is staphylococcus coagulase positive the species is aureus so catalase positive coagulase positive can say it is staphylococcus aureus so this is all about staphylococcus aureus the important virulence factors and their action the various important clinical presentation with the diagnostic features so with that the so resistance in staphylococcus aureus is very very important we know we have one resistant staphylococcus aureus which is more common nowadays that is mrsa methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus so the name is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus but name doesn't go with the definition because staphyl mrsa is not only resistant to methicillin mrsa is resistant to all beta lactam antibiotics that is a very important point so mrsa means a staphylococcus aureus but the staphylococcus aureus into all beta lactam antibiotics not only to methicillin so methicillin acts acts as a marker here for all beta lactam antibiotics Sir, how does this Staphylococcus aureus will become MRSA? That is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. That is nothing but how does Staphylococcus aureus acquire this resistance and become MRSA? So the answer is so Staphylococcus aureus acquire this resistance by a process known as transduction, which we have already discussed, which is nothing but the transfer of the resistant genes. from susceptible staphylococcus aureus to resistant staphylococcus aureus sorry from resistant staphylococcus aureus to susceptible staphylococcus aureus the resistant gene is transferred from the resistant to susceptible staphylococcus aureus right and it is transferred by a method that is transduction with the help of bacteriophage right if it is transferred with the help of bacteriophage we call it as transduction and transduction is the most common method of acquiring anti uh, antibacterial resistance by staphylococcus aureus right followed by other methods like conjugation which is the resistant gene which is transferred by this method transduction it is mec a gene so mec a gene is transferred which is the resistant gene which make the staphylococcus aureus into mrsa so how this mec a gene will convert this sa into mrsa the answer is sir mec a gene it will change the binding protein of beta lactam antibiotics the binding protein of beta lactam antibiotics is pbp penicillin binding protein which is present on staphylococcus aureus and this mec a gene will converts pbp to pbp2a so this new binding protein our beta lactam antibiotics the antibiotics they will not bind once they do not bind they, they do not bind they cannot act so that's how now mrsa developed resistance to all beta lactam antibiotics sir we know how to identify staphylococcus aureus right this now we have discussed here microscopy culture and the test so can we identify mrsa answer is yes we have to identify mrsa because the treatment is the treatment changes here because it is beta lactam antibiotics are the first line treatment for to treat staphylococcus aureus and here mrsa is resistant to all beta lactam antibiotics that's why it is very important to identify whether it is staphylococcus aureus or mrsa that is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus so we have two methods one is phenotypic method that is the disc diffusion method and one is genotypic method do the pcr 
So in the disk diffusion method, what we do is we use Cephox Zetin disk. One second, very important point. We use Cephox Zetin disk. Cephox Zetin, we know that it is a second generation cephalosporin. Again, it is a marker for all beta lactam antibiotics similar to methicillin. If Staphylococcus aureus is sensitive, right? If Staphylococcus aureus is sensitive to Cephox Zetin, then it is Staphylococcus aureus. And if it is resistant to Cephox Zetin, right, then it is MRSA. Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So that's how we detect whether it is SA or MRSA based on cefoxetin disc method. That is a type of disc diffusion method. So by PCR, we detect the resistant gene that is MECK gene. We know that if MECK gene is present, it is MRSA. If it is absent, it is just Staphylococcus aureus. And the drug of choice, the drug of choice, when it is resistant to all beta lactam antibiotics, the next best drug of choice or the best drug of choice for MRSA is vancomycin, which belongs to the group glycopeptide so vancomycin is the drug of choice other than vancomycin sir we can also use other drugs like linezolid we can also use other drugs like streptogramins 